We are here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson. My pleasure today is to talk with Dean Vogel with the Lockwood organization, and you do more stuff with Rotax engines than just about anybody just in about the U.S. Anybody, yeah. And we've got something brand new here. This is the Rotax 912 IS with the Sport added onto the back of it. What does that Sport mean, Dean? Okay, basically what that means is, as, as you know, we've, the IS has been out for about two years now. A completely different electronic ignition, electronic injection, and everything that goes along with it. Um, that engine has worked out really well. We've learned a lot of things in the field uh, over the last two years. Rotax has been very disciplined about staying on the engine and, and making a lot of uh, changes to it. Uh, one of the things that has shown up in the sport um, arena in the United States, which is kind of as opposed to what's going on in Europe, is that with the sport, you have to have a fixed pitch propeller. Well, as a result of that, uh, for takeoff power, initial climb power, you're limited down around the 5200 RPM range, and the IS has been significantly lower than the carbureted engines in torque in that RPM. It's been period. a little bit of a, a little weak in torque compared to the older engines. At that engine. spot, exactly. The big, the big news at this point is that they, they redesigned the airbox on here. The airbox is now made out of aluminum instead of the plastic. Oh, it had been plastic engine. before, okay. Correct, correct. And in and addition is, to... Is it a little higher? It is. It's, it's a 27 millimeters taller. That's, just, that's just not over much an taller. Right. So by the time people have had cowlings that will come over the top, the injector housings, they're you, most of them are pretty clear and they're not going to have a problem. Yeah, now this one here looks like it's actually got plenty of room, oh, but yeah, some of them are probably tighter than this. Right. There might okay. be some that would be tighter. Okay. Um, and especially like, I don't know, Pepistrol or somebody who may have put a radiator over the top of it, they might have some problems. Ah, okay. So, but only a very small percentage of them will have that difficulty. Now, along with so the what does this new thing do for us? Well, what I was just going to say was, along with the larger size, because it's bigger volume, it also okay. has tuned induction horns in there, kind of like what hot rodders use to tune for torque in an engine. So as a result of that, now when you look at the torque curve on the engine, when you get back down into the 5200 RPM range, the torque on this engine is actually higher than the carburetor. Ah, engines. really? Okay. So that that's a pretty the, significant change. Then. Right, right. And this is going to be something that the pilot. We're going to talk to John uh, McBean of Kitfox, who makes this lovely airplane, because he flew it down here from a long ways away. So he's got some real Excellent. experience with it now. Well, what he did, just just see, well, and he'll go into detail with you about it. But we did the modification here at Lockwood last week. Ah, okay, okay. That's why he brought it down here to get this done. Okay. And then he did cross country. So he flew down, down here in a regular uh, Correct. 912 Correct. IS. Exactly. Okay. And then and then he proceeded immediately to do a cross country to Key West and back. Ah, okay, okay. Well, that was some, that was some hours. So of yeah. Now. So so yeah. So he's got some good experience and he's looking forward to the flight home and he'll tell you more about that. Okay. Well, we'll talk to John in a minute here, but okay. uh, yeah, continue on, Dean. All right. So now some of the other changes that they made had to do again with things that we've learned in the field. For instance, we've had airflow battering some of the connectors on the uh, ignition coils, so that uh, created problems with some of them on the connections. So they went back to the threaded prong to make that much ah, okay. more Okay, yeah, some of them, uh, they could work a little bit loose and then you had some lighting. Exactly. Lights exactly. come on the panel and right. concern people. And then, and then another thing that happened back here was the connectors on the pressure and the temperature sensors on the air box. Uh, those would vibrate as well. So what they've done is they've added a bracket here to the air oh, I see. Okay. so uh -huh. that now we can strap those connectors down and immobilize them so we can eliminate that problem. So that should eliminate any of that uh, lane A, lane B light thing that exactly. some, not everybody exactly. did, but a few people recognized the problem. Right, so right. There weren't many, but, oh, but again, no. Rotax is very disciplined about paying attention to what's going on and making modifications to make this engine much more reliable. And uh, so now this is the Sport, and again, it's, it's aimed at the Sport aviation market. And for those hundred or so airplanes in the United States that already have the IS, Rotax is going to provide this kit for free until the end of October. Oh, wow. Okay. I was just going to ask you, okay, let's say I've already owned an aircraft with a 912 IS in it, and I kind of hear this news that you just told me about. I go, well, I want that too. Yeah, I want that too. Right. Okay, so they're going to provide the they're going to provide the parts for free. They're going to provide the parts for free for a while anyway. The, yeah. Right until the end of October. Well, that's a pretty long window. We're here in the spring of the year, so we're talking the fall right. of the year. You got plenty of time to act then. Correct. And then the only thing the owner is responsible for is the labor to install. Ah, okay. And it has to be done with somebody who's well, qualified. Well, I suppose that because it's at all different airplanes. And, right. Yeah. Right. Right. That, make, that makes exactly. sense. They couldn't yeah. cover that as well. But Was that's kind of them to give all the uh, the parts. So you're going to get. So the guy with the IS engine goes, "Hey, I love this engine. I love the fuel economy of it. There's a lot to love." Right. But I need just a little more hoop in the right time. Right. And this is going to deliver right. that this to him. Right. Was there not an update on the clutch as well? They, the the. Uh, 
part of that update and one of the reasons why it has to be a qualified Rotax person is that yes, the gearbox has to come off and the now overload clutch, okay. the breakaway force has to be increased. Has to be oh increased. sure, well you're going to give it more boost, you got to do something about there it. There you go. So how, go. how, what kind of hours is involved with doing that? It's when you, when you talk about, about the clutch. About a day. Oh, oh really? Okay, yeah, only a day. Well, that's not so bad yeah. then. So that's not going to be that burdensome of cost for someone. No. And then they're going to have the latest and greatest, and they're going to have more juice, and, and they're going to just be a happier. They're going to be delayed. Excellent. Yes, they will. All right, great, Dean. Well, thank you so much about that. Now, Lockwood and uh, Aerotechnical Institute, I believe. Right. Uh, you do a lot of training on these engines as well. Yes, so we let's have. talk about the services that you provide to people that say. Okay, look, uh, you know, this is all great what you told me here, but I'd like to be one of the guys that can do this work. Right. Can you help people uh, get yeah, knowledgeable do. about that? We or do. an existing mechanic, for example? Right. We do training several times a year. Okay. Uh, we do what's called service level training. It's a two-day program. It's a good program for people who are just owners. You get somebody that just wants to operate the engine, know okay. how to do it without doing something to it. That, that, that would cost Just to money. learn more about the engine right, and exactly. that they're flying exactly. behind, okay. And then, or in front of. In and that cases. class is also a good introductory one, an important introductory, introductory, introductory one for uh, mechanics and home builders. Ah, okay. Right? And then there's a two-day maintenance class, which is the one that's done by almost all the maintainers and a good percentage of the home builders as well. It helps them familiarize themselves with the engines. And I do cover information in those classes on the IS engines and on the 914s too, for that matter. And, and basically, like, let's say home builders. What I usually do is I tell home builders, look, build your airplane. Get the whole airplane done. When you're ready to do the firewall forward, order the firewall forward package. Schedule yourself for class. When you get back from class, the whole kit's going to be sitting there waiting for you. It's all going to be fresh in your head. And you know what? Putting that thing on is just going to be a lot more fun. Yeah, it sounds like great advice. When you have more confidence in yourself and how to do it without messing something. Kind of like actually reading the manual before you start to operate the computer, huh? The instructions <laughs> when you instruct. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay, let's get uh, let's get a couple of web addresses from you, Dean, about okay. uh, uh, the Lockwood organization. If you've got a separate one for Aerotechnical Institute, uh, we'll put them okay. up on the screen. You don't have to spell stuff for us, but uh, okay. tell us some web addresses where we get more information uh, about one, the services we've discussed. One place to go would be uh, www.lockwood.aero. That's Lockwood. our company Aero. website. Okay. Okay. That's easy. You can email at info at lockwood.aero. Uh, for uh, a lot of different kinds of information. You can email me at dean at lockwood.aero uh, if you have interest in the classes. I've got a really generic email that I send out to people that are interested in the classes, okay. describes the classes, has maps, hotel information, and the works. So anybody and you're can, located where? Sebring Port. Sebring Port. All right, so pretty convenient. Anybody that knows anything about the Sebring U.S. Sport Aviation Expo already knows there that that's go. where you are, but right. for those that managed Everything. to somehow miss that that's information, <laughs> Uh, easy to find. Thank you so much for talking to us. I've got lots of information about the Lockwood organization, about these engines, about lots and lots of airplanes in the LSA and light kit space. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Dean Bogle and myself here at Sun and Fun.